Your college football game day has come early. Goes down the field for sick. He goes up high. He's got get away from the top speed. And the ball is free. Woo! What a hit. You got barbecue back there. From underdog triumphs to powerhouse showdowns, we've got your winning playbook covered. <laughs> BetQLU with Chris Mack, RJ Choppy, and John Martin. Presented by BetMGM. The sports book born in Vegas. Download the app today. Please gamble responsibly. And we may not have a ton of beauties on the schedule this weekend. Don't worry. We've already made it to week six, and there is plenty to talk about, including in a totally wild Big 12 that is probably as wide open as it's ever been. Some crazy finishes last week in week five, including down in Miami, a team we'll be talking about in detail a little bit later. The Heisman market takes a little bit more of a shake because every week we've got to do that. And of course, a game of the year nominee on uh, the slate to look back at already. Plenty to get to here on BetQLU, live coast-to-coast on the BetQL network. You hear us every single Friday night and Saturday morning, and you can always watch on the Odyssey Sports channel on YouTube as well. And download us in podcast form as soon as we're ready to download wherever you get your podcast by simply searching for BetQLU. Alongside RJ Choppy and John Martin, I'm Chris Mack, and we are ready to go for Week 6, boys. But let's start with a look back, like I mentioned, at Week 5 and an instant classic as Alabama holds on to beat Georgia 41-34, 374 yards through the air, and a few big touchdown passes from Jalen Milrow. John, 17-year-old true freshman Ryan Williams, who now conveniently enough has a photo of Michael Vick holding a puppy as his Instagram (laughs) profile picture, finishes with half a dozen catches for 177 yards in the game-winning TD. Carson Beck continues his tumble down the Heisman board, 27 of 50 for 439 with three touchdowns, but the three picks, and Georgia now 1-9 and against Alabama since 2008 with the only victory coming in the 21 title game. So, We've got Georgia. We've got Bama. Texas is still somewhere in the mix in that SEC as well. Handicap the three big, pun intended, dogs there at the top of the SEC now, John. Yeah. um, That's the hard part because you're trying to sort of figure out how to value each of those teams. I mean, yes, Alabama won the game, uh, and they deserve credit for that, and it was a brilliant performance for 15 to 18 minutes from them. I mean, just a, a furious performance from them. But Georgia spotted them 28, and they took the lead in the fourth quarter. Um, they didn't win. They didn't hold on. But I think that's, you know, that's the thing you kind of have to try to weigh here is do I think more of the first half performance from Alabama or do I think more of the second half rally uh, from Georgia? Uh, I still have Texas uh, above both of these teams, to be honest. Uh, like, I just do. I think it's going to be very difficult for Jalen Milrow and Ryan Williams to duplicate that performance every single week in the SEC. Um, not that I don't think that he'll improve in that system under DeBoer. But um, I think, look, there's a real chance that all three of those teams are in the in the playoff. I mean, I think that's the, that's the long and short of it. I think Alabama probably solidified their spot with that win. Georgia's going to have to play pretty damn perfect, but we know they can do that. Um, and, and uh, you know, look, Texas has that game with Georgia coming up, and and so that'll be certainly uh, quite uh, defining in that way. But, look, I, I think both teams have a lot to feel good about, even if I do still value Texas over both of them. You know, the reality is, is that Texas is probably the only one that's going to finish without a loss. Uh Georgia's already got one. Um, you know, Bama's gonna Bama will, will lose at Tennessee, and they'll wind up losing at Georgia. Tennessee loses at Georgia, and Texas is gonna wind up with no losses. There, I, I think Alabama's the rightful number one team. I don't think they're as good as Texas. I think Texas is better. Um, I think if you played that game again, maybe Georgia wins. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't. I don't buy Bama. Yeah. I don't buy. I don't. I don't. I don't buy Bama. But they've earned the right to be number one. You beat 
uh, the team that has been the number one team in the nation basically for three straight, straight years, uh, three years running now. And you beat them. And wh when you're up 28 zip, I don't need the final score to know who the better team was. When all things are equal at the start of the game, and that's the only time in a game that all things are equal, that team was up 28 zip. I didn't need, I don't, I don't, I don't really care about the comeback. Um, it matters. It does matter because you know, that, that shows teams could fall asleep and Bama fell well, asleep. And they took the lead. And, you know, it wasn't yeah. even like a, this was, I mean, they, they were winning, you know, they were winning for 12 seconds. Yeah. And that, that showed a lot too. <laughs> that, that showed a lot too from Bama's case. Right. I mean, now you, you blew this lead and now you got to come back and they did. And it's not like they had a 12 play drive, like a I am he kind of drive. It was one pass. And, Ryan Williams right, did right, right. a well, tremendous job of of controlling his body, making a catch, but, and then spinning. But how many times have we already seen this this year, Choppy? Alabama's never out of a game or never this far, more than this far away right. from putting a game away, right? Like, right. as long as Alabama gets one play, they are in it. And so I think right now, it's it, they are, it, like you said, in their rightful spot atop the rankings, right? But it, as John pointed out, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have almost like a midseason semifinals, right? And we can get to Ohio State and how they fit into this whole thing in a second. But in a couple of weeks, you, you mentioned it, the Tide are going to go to Knoxville, right? And the Bulldogs are going to go to Austin. And we're going to have like a little midseason battle royal here. And we're going to get a better idea, I think, of where each of these teams really sits in the pecking order again with Ohio State somewhere in the mix. It's yeah, and that's the one that's that is the one thing I don't care for with the playoff is I mean that that day could have so much more meaning to it. You know, as it is unless there's a major upset. I mean, all the you know, pretty much all four of those teams are going to wind up finding the way in the top 12 unless mm. there's, you know, unless it just a lot of crazy things happen. And that does take away. That does take away from that game a little bit. Uh, I, I we're all old enough to remember uh, a time where you know if, if you if you lose, like you're you're done. Mm -hmm. You know you you you're out, and and that's just not the case anymore. And Georgia still has a chance, and they should. I mean, they're like, they're a good enough team. Uh, they're, they're a good enough team, but you know they're gonna. You know, Bama might have to prove and beat Georgia again. They might have to prove they're better than Georgia twice just to get an automatic oh, for bid. Sure. Yeah. And I would say like I I prefer that I prefer this format to oh I lose one time like mm -hmm. Georgia being left out of the playoff last year was tragic. We all know yep. that they were one of the four best teams in college football, right? But yep. by virtue of that format and four teams and conference champion and things like that, they had to, they had to be left out on that virtue. And that's BS. So, you know, at least you know, yeah, it might sort of cheapen the regular season because, like, you can lose it or you can maybe lose twice, you know, depending on the league you're in and get in. At least we – I think almost every year we're going to feel like the teams that belong in that discussion are still going to be playing, um, which makes that whole uh, entire ordeal feel better. Well, here's here's what I like is it, because of the fact that if you're a, a good team in a very good conference, to your point – you may feel like you can still get into the playoff, John, with two losses. Like, Georgia may look at it and say, well, heck, I mean, if we end up at the end of the year and 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 two of our we have two losses and we don't get to play, play in the SEC championship game, but two of those losses are to Bama and Texas or Bama and Tennessee, we've still got a really mm -hmm. good argument, right? And Absolutely. I think that encourages teams – to schedule and look, those will all be conference games. Let's be clear about that. But it still yeah. encourages teams to schedule more difficult games early in the season. I think it encourages conferences to spread those games out throughout the season, as we're seeing when we look at, for example, Georgia's schedule. Georgia's schedule opens with at that point a 14th ranked Clemson team. They're going to have Bama, Texas, and Tennessee all in the middle of that schedule too, but spaced a few weeks apart. I think to your point. Man, this sets things up where every single week, and again, we're talking about week six now, it, it doesn't have one of these games, but almost every other week is going to feel choppy like it's got at least one heavyweight bout on the card. 
Uh, no doubt, and that that's that's something to love about this because it does have a heavy. I mean, this is every week, man. Every single week, there's a great game, and it's because the conference. And, and look, it's and this is just the beginning. We are five, eight years away from having two conferences, and this is just the beginning of this. And, and you can imagine when you're gonna get. You know Oklahoma State and and T, you know SMU and Clemson and, and Florida State and you know some of these other teams in these conferences these you know these the SEC and the Big Ten and they all merge. I mean, you're going to have big time games every week. I mean you're not even going to have room for the uh, yeah. Akron's uh, or the Tulsa's of the world, right? You're not even going to have room for them on your schedule. Yeah, and I would also say too to that discussion. I mean we saw the news this week. Uh, of the SEC and the Big Ten all getting together, they want mm -hmm. four spots each guaranteed. Now, I'm not. I'm, who knows if they'll get that? But I think in terms of the bigger picture, nobody's going to make any kind of big decisions about scheduling until 2026, until they know for sure. You know what the uh, what the format's going to look like. Speaking of the format. Um... We know there will be a group of five team this year in the current format. That's the way it's constituted. Um, well, I, I, I plan on suing if that ever changes. I mean, I am, I got my you attorneys personally. ready on retainer, ready to fight. John Martin versus the college football playoff. I look forward to it because I think you can hold your own in that. Um, it'd be like a That's really right. good episode of Matlock. You'd walk in with that gray suit. And you'd you'd have that little you'd saunter on up there. You'd ask for a sidebar. That's right. You'd have all the fancy group terms ready five. to go. <laughs> Speaking of the group of five, <laughs> the big story last week was Matthew Sluka, UNLV quarterback, saying, um, thanks, UNLV, but uh, bleep you pay me. And they didn't pay him, so he said, I'm out. Um, UNLV said, okay, that's all right. And they still went out and handled business. 11-1 uh, to 1 to make the playoff as of Thursday. Um, and Boise State is 2-1. to one. They're still the favorite amongst those group of five teams. Uh, in particular, the teams from the Mountain West to make the playoff. But I think what we're seeing here is, and it's a UNLV team, full disclosure, you may be listening to this on Saturday morning and UNLV lost last night. We don't know. I don't think that's the case. I think UNLV is going to win Friday night, and we're talking about this on Thursday night. But, you know, let's hop out of the DeLorean for just a second, McFly, and let's talk about the fact that we've got multiple teams now that we could talk about from the Group of Five perspective, John, UNLV is one of those teams that has, I don't want to say came out of nowhere because some people had them pegged coming into the season, but you get three or four and now six weeks in and you say, oh, okay, you can win your way into this current 12-team playoff format. They're great. They're, they're a really good team. Um, they were clearly inspired defensively more than anything um, by that quarterback change. And, you know, I, I think certainly you get a week of that. I'll be interested to see kind of this week against Syracuse coming in. Weird game because it's it's a non-conference game, just sort of randomly um, after they've already started conference play. But, I mean, you can't deny just the, the difference in effort, um, you know, defensively. And, again, pretty much a perfect game from Hodge Malik Williams uh, at quarterback. I mean, that was, that was special. 59 points on 56 plays. I mean, I, I just don't think you can do any better than that. So, look, um, I, I, I think it's a fine bet at 11-1 because what does it boil down to? It boils down to they're hosting Boise State, which they're obviously not going to be plus 1,100 against, and then they're going to have to beat Boise State again. But if they are in the, uh, in the Mountain West title game, it's going to be back in Vegas, which they're mm -hmm. also not going to be, mm -hmm. you know, 11-1 to 1 against. So – Memphis has kind of uh, removed themselves from the conversation. They were one of those teams that people thought could break the playoff coming in. They lost to Navy, you know, in their first game, and they're really behind the eight ball. Tulane is the other one to watch, I would feel like, you know, because if they can win every game the rest of the way, uh, you know, they'll, they'll certainly be, be rising up the board. But I, I just think UNLV definitely um, is a little underpriced here at 11-1, to 1, given, uh, given the experience of the quarterback and just how – they control some of so much of it, right? That's the beauty of when you make bets like that. You want to you want that team to have control, and UNLV definitely will have that. Choppy, we only got like a minute here, so give me a, a plus money team. Doesn't have to be from the group of five, but a plus money team who's outside, say the top eight that you look at and say 
that's a team I like for the playoff. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, outside the top eight, I mean, I still think Missouri is is a uh, is a team that you have to look at. Uh, they have a very favorable schedule. Uh, they've got a tough one this weekend at A and M. Uh, it's so tough that their coach is panicking and not allowing his assistant recruiting director, who's the brother of Marcel, excuse me, the sister of Marcel Reed, the A and M uh, quarterback who's been filling in for Connor Wegman. She won't even, he won't even allow her at any of the practices. But I, I think that they're a decent bet. I mean, look, there's a, there's a lot of teams from the group of five that obviously would be one of them. I love the UNLV and I love the, the boys State picks, but I, I would think that that Missouri would be one of those teams that I would look at. Let's talk Missouri. Let's do that because they're a part of one of the uh, of the only ranked matchup of the weekend. We'll talk Missouri A&M, which Choppy just brought up. We'll talk Miami going out west for an ACC game. What? And Michigan-Washington National Championship rematch is now a conference game in the Big Ten. All three of those next right here on BetQLU. You've been listening to BetQLU, presented by BetMGM. If you missed any of the show, listen back anytime on the new and improved Odyssey app. Are you ready, sir? Start your engines. Let's go. Astros money line versus the Marlins. Johnny Cueto, no thank you. Yeah. Oh my goodness. How does this affect me personally? Which is absolutely bonkers to me. If you do the middle school math, is 117 yards per game that you got to post each and every week. I knew it. I knew it. Who has the upper hand? Do we think it's going to be the offenses or do we think it's going to be the defenses? How about Saturday's game? Let's just throw a random game out here. Like, I don't want to put faith in NC State. There's a chance we'll, we'll lose Team. outright. Who knows? Jinx is definitely not paying attention right now. He's just vibing to the music. Are you ready for the most interactive sports gambling show? Introducing BetQL Send It In with PJ Glasser. We want to hear from you. Send It In is about your picks, your trends, and your fades. Share your thoughts, predictions, and your best daily best bets with the Send It In community. Set your reminders, mark your calendars, and get ready to send it in on weekday afternoons at 1 Eastern on Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch. On your home for wagertainment, the BetQL Network, presented by BetMGM. Go for the betting cycle on BetQL with Cody Decker. Cody Decker, former professional baseball player, turned professional smartass on the radio. Sports handicapper Rob Brown. When Penix Jr. plays USC, he's getting 400 yards. Cycling all the top plays. And Cody Decker, I think Florida can cover today. And one outrageous show parlay. One, two, three. Ah! Oh! Let the chaos begin. It's Bet for the Cycle on the BetQL Network, presented by BetMGM. Some would say that maybe he'll be chasing Super Bowl MVP. Really makes me angry that, like, Knicks fans can't have anything. We've been bad for... Oh, I get it. Now it's, okay, 100% of attention on 9 million games tonight. It's a, it's a playoff game! <laughs> We've seen this movie before, and we know how it ends. And it ends with absolute disaster. But I'll tell you, that's fun. But the most fun thing about betting on sports for me is this like hey there's no tomorrow (laughs) and now come on put pick it in are you ready sir start your engines let's go astros money line versus the marlins johnny cueto no thank you yeah oh my goodness how does this affect me personally which is absolutely bonkers to me if you do the middle school math, is 117 yards per game that you got to post each and every weekend. I knew it. I knew it. Who has the upper hand? Do we think it's going to be the offenses or do we think it's going to be the defenses? How about Saturday's game? 
let's just throw a random game out here. Like, I don't want to put faith in NC State. There's a chance we'll, we'll lose Jinx. outright. Who knows? Jinx is definitely not paying attention right now. He's just vibing to the music. Are you ready for the most interactive sports gambling show? Introducing BetQL Send It In with PJ Glasser. We want to hear from you. Send It In is about your picks, your trends, and your fades. Share your thoughts, predictions, and your best daily best bets with the Send It In community. Set your reminders, mark your calendars, and get ready to send it in on weekday afternoons at 1 Eastern on Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch. On your home for wagertainment, the BetQL Network, presented by BetMGM. Some would say that maybe he'll be chasing Super Bowl MVP. Really makes me angry that, like, Knicks fans can't have anything. We've been bad for... Oh, I get it. Now it's okay. 100% of attention on 9 million games tonight. It's a, it's a playoff game. <laughs> We've seen this movie before, and we know how it ends. And it ends with absolute disaster. But I'll tell you, that's fun. But the most fun thing about betting on sports for me is this like hey there's no tomorrow <laughs> and oh. now come on put pig it in Let's get back to BetQLU, presented by BetMGM. And live coast to coast on the BetQL network, it is BetQLU, presented by BetMGM, the sports book born in Vegas, alongside John Martin and RJ Choppy. I'm Chris Mack. Don't forget, you can watch the show on YouTube on the Odyssey Sports Channel, and always download us in podcast form as soon as we're ready for your college football weekend by just searching BetQLU wherever you get your podcast. One conference is just pure chaos uh, and may continue to be every single week until the end of the year because maybe a one-bid league and everybody wants to knock everybody else off. We'll get into that in just a couple of moments. And also maybe an updated look at one guy who is rocketing up the Heisman board as well, even if his team may not be the best in that aforementioned uh, Big 12 conference. Let's talk a couple of matchups, though, that are really interesting. In particular, we'll start with one that Choppy brought up a couple minutes ago, the only ranked matchup of the weekend, a noon Eastern, 11 Central kickoff in College Station, number nine Missouri Tigers visiting the number 25 Gigamaggies. Missouri two, coming off uh, two really close calls, RJ, against BC and Vanderbilt. Somehow, with Luther Burden and Theo Wees and Brady Cook at quarterback, they are still outside the top 100 in the country in explosive play rate. Uh, this will be their first game on the road, but it comes off of a bye. Aggies have won four straight since that close loss to the Irish. Uh, Marcel Reed looking better at quarterback than injured Connor Wegman uh, ever did, but Wegman might be back this week. So, um, Mike Elko has said he'll be a game-time decision. Whoever starts, it's going to be going against easily the toughest defense the Aggies have faced. And yes, that includes the Irish, who they faced in week one, Choppy. So um, what, what is the handicap on this one with the Aggies laying two at home to a top-10 team? Well, A&M never covers at home, ever. They never cover at home. Um, they the, the, the problem with this game, and this is this is actually – the most perfect game. It's the it's my favorite type of game. It's a game that you put on, but since you have such little faith in either program, you <laughs> wouldn't touch it with a bet. You wouldn't touch the over. You wouldn't touch the under. You wouldn't touch the, the total. None of it. Money line, nope. I, I don't trust either team. The only thing I know about Missouri and Texas A&M is that they're going to disappoint you at some point. 
And that's why I generally stay as far away from a Texas A&M or Missouri game as I possibly can. Missouri should win. They're a better team. But I, you, you said it. Like, Connor Wegman is not a very good quarterback. Marcel Reed's played much better than he has um, this year. And, you know, they're going to go back to Wegman if he's healthy. That's just the way they are. But I'm not sure that they should. So I, 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 I advise you. With as little intellect as I possibly have in my brain, just don't bet this game, John. I, Choppy makes a good argument for not touching this thing, but I see a couple of disappointing offenses and a couple of teams that have combined gone three and six to the over this year, and I see a number at forty-eight and a half that still feels like I got some wiggle room there. Like this feels like a twenty seventeen kind of game. Oh, you're muted, John. Oh, we got to no. turn John's turn turn John's mic back on. Let this man speak away. on this. It's yeah, it's worth it. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I think you're exactly right. I was hoping that you guys could read lips. I mean, that was really an exercise in seeing if you guys could read. Yeah, lips. I failed. You miserably. failed miserably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, I, I think you're exactly right. I mean, I think it, in, instead of trying to solve this puzzle of uh, you know the quarterback situation uh, at A and M, trying to figure out a side here, and you know. Um, Take a take a, you know. I mean, I, I'm I'm not a huge buyer of Missouri. I really haven't been all year long, so you know, I don't feel like I'm getting any great big discount at plus two and a half here against the defense of Texas A&M. So, yeah, I think if I was going to play this, it would be the under. But I think that's that's the that's the lesson here, right? Um, it's mm -hmm. okay to pass ranked games, and this is ranked sort of in name only. Neither one of these teams feels serious mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, Missouri's been wildly disappointing, like I mentioned earlier, especially on offense. Uh, Sunday night at 10 Eastern, there will be an ACC game kicking off in Berkeley, California. I'm trying to follow this still, but geography doesn't mean anything in current conference alignment. So the number eight Miami Hurricanes are going out to Berkeley, to the Bay Area, to visit the Cal Bears and lay 10, 10 and a half in what is an ACC conference game. Kane's looking to start 6-0 and for the first time in seven years. 247 points they have put up to this point in the season, most of any FBS team, and Cam Ward continues to climb up the Heisman board. Uh, third in, in the market, uh, as low as second, and tied with Travis Hunter at 5-1 to one at BetMGM. He's thrown for at least 300 yards and three touchdowns in all five of Miami's games. Leads the country with 18 passing touchdowns. We can argue about how ridiculous the end of the Virginia Tech game was if we want. What's more interesting to me is looking at this game and wondering, does Miami put it on Cal um, and just run away with this thing? Or do the surprising 3-1 and one Cal Bears put up a little bit of a fight here, John? You know, upset win week two at Auburn. Um, ugly loss to Florida State a couple weeks ago in their first conference game. But here nor there, um, they've got a pretty good defense, I think. And maybe it slows down Cam Ward and the Canes just a little bit, John. Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, um, Miami absolutely stole that game last Friday night against Virginia Tech. Um, that was honestly egregious that that was awarded to Miami. Mm -hmm. Um because the, 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 the spirit of the rule is uh, the call on the field has to stand unless there's indisputable evidence. Uh, and I think all three of us can agree that there was not. Now, was it a catch? Should it have been ruled a catch on the field? Obviously, probably not, but it was. And so by the spirit of the rule and the interpretation of the rule, that should have stood and that should have been a loss for Miami. That being said, they played about as bad as they're ever going to probably play this year. And they still won the game. Um now, you have to factor in, and all this is obviously priced into the market, but this is a big, big, um, you know, travel situation for them. I mean, you're going exactly mm -hmm. uh, the whole way across the across the country here, but I don't know. It would it would really uh, not be an enjoyable experience, in my, in my view, to bet against Cam Ward and that Miami offense when they can play as badly as they played and turn the ball over as much as they did and still win the game. Um, it, would, it would be Miami for me. I uh, I kind of like Cal here. Um, 18, 19, 20-year-old kids traveling from 
the east to the west are playing uh, in a in a in a time zone that they probably never played in before. Um, that throws up your, your sleep rhythm, man. I'm just gonna say that. I mean, it is a 10 p.m. start for those kids. They will be asleep. You all know about the circadian sleep rhythm. We taught you that in, in college. Yeah. You got to know about these things. You know, Choppy, bringing up circadian rhythms. This is perfect. You got to know right. about this. Looking for the edge. Yes, for the you got to get the edge, man. You got to get the edge. The teams going west to east have an Choppy. advantage over teams going east to west. Ch Choppy, both of us as fathers of teenagers know that circadian rhythms for teenagers are at their peak at like 10 p.m. Yeah. They're just getting going. So Just I think this going, is this right. is this is the spot for Miami. They're gonna man. stay on that Eastern body clock, man. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, 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 it is. This is not just for college. I mean, this happens in the NFL all the time. You get a team. You get a team that's going all the way out to San Francisco or LA or Seattle. I mean, just take the points with the other with the uh, with, with the West Coast team. I am all, all right. about Cal in this one. All right, Choppy's all over the Cal Bears and the 10 and a half against the number eight Canes going out west. Interesting to note with the total right around 53 and a half, 54. Uh, Miami 4 0 oh, 1 to the over in their five games. Cal 0 oh, 4 to the over. They have played low scoring games. So, really, not a trend you like on either side of this thing if you're trying to avoid a side and play the total. Uh, speaking of low totals, Michigan. Number 10 in the country still somehow, despite having a barely functioning offense, uh, playing Washington. 7.30 Eastern kick, Michigan and Washington out west in Seattle. Huskies laying two and a half, a total of just 41 and a half. Um, obviously a rematch of last season's national championship game. Um, I guess if you want to, you could talk about how Michigan has won their last two visits to Seattle. I don't completely different teams. I don't think that really applies here. What's more important to me, John, is that Michigan nearly blew a three touchdown lead at home to Minnesota last week yeah. and didn't, didn't score a TD in the final 33 minutes of that game. Just a couple of field goals to somehow stay ahead yeah. of PJ flex gophers. They are now somehow two and zero in the big 10, and this will technically be a big 10 game despite having less than 100 yards passing in each of those conference victories. The fifth worst passing offense in the FBS. Just 115 yards per game, and just 59 yards passing per game when Alex Orgy is under center as the starting quarterback. Steve Belichick, as big a weirdo as he is, has the Washington defense looking pretty good. Eighth in the country in yards per play allowed. So, I, you know... You could talk about Will Rogers, where he's now sort of slowly climbing into the fringes of the Heisman conversation if you want. I look at this as under 41 and a half. The Washington offense has struggled at times, even if they've driven against teams to finish drives off. And the Michigan offense is an utter dumpster fire, John. Yeah, all those uh, stats and numbers courtesy of our Penn State Research Department. Uh, Thank you very much. Michigan. It took me yeah. all week to yeah. come up with those. Yeah, that that came to us straight from uh yeah Happy Valley. Um, uh huh. Yeah, this is this is this is the first time since 1978 that a top ten reigning champion has been an underdog to an unranked team. Now we're not talking about big numbers here. We're talking about and as you guys can see, a point and a half. That's not really much to speak of. But uh, Washington was probably the unluckiest team in America last week. I mean, and, I, and I'm saying that as somebody that was on Rutgers, like, you know, sometimes you um, you get it all in, in poker with the worst hand. You have like King 10 suited and it's, you know, you're up against aces and you somehow like river a straight. That's that's <laughs> that's how it felt. That's how it felt having Rutgers last week. Um, and and honestly, uh, you know, I think Washington is a really well coached team. I do. I think they're um, they're showing signs of improvement. That quarterback has been – he's played in high-level SEC games. Not well, but he has, uh, and he's been around college forever. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't hate Washington here, but I, I do agree with you. Um, I don't think they're going to move the ball nearly as well as they did last week against Rutgers. You know, that's going to be more of a struggle. Um, and so I have absolutely no issues with this under here. Uh, I, I got no issues with the under here either. Um Michigan is not inspiring. They don't play inspiring offensive football. 
Uh, and then you look, you have Washington. I mean, they lost. I mean, the amount of first rounders and, and NFL players they lost off their offense. It's just really hard to recreate that. And that's it's one of the things that's easier in 2024 college football than it was in, say, 2004, you know, where you didn't have the transfer portal. But, you know, sometimes you miss. Uh, or, or sometimes, you know, you get a new co- – in this case, you get a new coach in there. And there's there's more of a changeover. So I, I think the under is, is the side I would take. I don't have a great feel on who comes out on top of this one. I mean, you're not really getting any great – uh, benefit by just betting the money line. So I think the under would be one of the play. Yeah, not a single Washington game has gone to the over yet this year. Michigan 3-2 and two to the over this year, but consider some of the tiny spreads they've been playing with. That's what she said. Uh, each team, for what it's worth, does have a running back averaging at least 100 rushing yards a game through at least four games. Jonah Coleman in Washington, Kalel Mullings in Michigan. Since I brought up Will Rogers and how he started to kind of creep into the fringes of the Heisman conversation, we have a minute and a half here. Travis Hunter has made a big leap up the Heisman board. Of course, hit the pose uh, last week. He's at 7-1 to one now after that uh, Colorado win over UCF. Carson Beck has tumbled down the board out of the top 10. When we look at the Heisman board, guys, you know, Milrow's still the favorite. I'll get. I'll throw it to you, Choppy. Is there a name out there where there's still some value? You can still find a seven to one on Cam Ward, maybe Ashton Genty still out there at ten to one in some spots. If you believe he can keep rolling the way he has to start the season, where do you look? Well, I mean, I, I, look. I think Quinn is still a really good value bet. He's at like twenty five to one or twenty to one, depending on when he is. They're going to have marquee games against. You know, uh, they still got the OU Texas game. They're going to have A and M. They're going to have Georgia, and they're going to have the SEC championship game. Those are all going to be mega games seen by 5 million people and every single voter. I mean, that's still, I think, to me, just the that it's sheer value. He might not win, right? And he might not have as mm-hmm. good of a chance as six other guys. But if you're just talking from a value perspective, is Colorado going to win enough games uh, for, for Travis Hunter to be able to win this thing? Uh, are they going to have enough primetime, big marquee wins? I mean, who are the good quarterbacks yeah. he's played? That's a problem, right? It's a problem if you're a voter. Uh, so I think Quinn at 20-1 to 1 is still a great value. Should we stay focused on quarterbacks here, John? I mean, I tell you what, man. I really, 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 really love this Ashton Genty kid. I mean, I haven't seen a running back like him since Adrian Peterson um, way back when in college. The problem is, though, like RJ said, um, I don't even know who the last non-Power 5 player was that won this award. You know, fair or not, um, I I, I think it's going to get held against him that he's doing this against Mountain West defenses, even though he's unstoppable. The guy is freaking unstoppable. Um, I think Travis Hunter will have a chance to to win it. Um, Dion's a big enough name that eyeballs will be on it, but – Man, in my heart, it should be Ashton Genty because the numbers that that dude is putting up are unbelievable. One conference in particular is absolutely bananas. Chaotic last week, could be again this weekend. We dive into that and get you our best bets before we wrap up as well next right here on BetQLU. You've been listening to BetQLU, presented by BetMGM. If you missed any of the show, listen back anytime on the new and improved Odyssey app. Are you ready, sir? Start your engines. Let's go. Astros money line versus the Marlins. Johnny Cueto, no thank you. Yeah. Oh my goodness. How does this affect me personally? Which is absolutely bonkers to me. If you do the middle school math, is 117 yards per game that you gotta post each and every weekend. I knew it, I knew it. Who has the upper hand? Do we think it's gonna be the offenses or do we think it's going to be the defenses? How about Saturday's game? Let's just throw a random game out here. Like, I don't want to put faith in NC State. There's a chance we'll, we'll lose Routine. outright. Who knows? Jinx is definitely not paying attention right now. He's just vibing to the music. Are you ready for the most interactive sports gambling show? Introducing BetQL Send It In with PJ Glasser. We want to hear from you. Send It In is about your picks, your trends, and your fades. Share your thoughts, predictions, and your best daily best bets with the Send It In community. Set your reminders, mark your calendars, and get ready to send it in on weekday afternoons at 1 Eastern on Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch. On your home for wagertainment, the BetQL Network, presented by BetMGM. 
Go for the betting cycle on BetQL with Cody Decker. Cody Decker, former professional baseball player, turned professional smartass on the radio. Sports handicapper Rob Brown. When Penix Jr. plays USC, he's getting 400 yards. Cycling all the top plays. And Cody Decker, I think Florida can cover today. And one outrageous show parlay. One, two, three. Ah! Oh! Let the chaos begin. It's Bet for the Cycle on the BetQL Network, presented by BetMGM. Some would say that maybe he'll be chasing Super Bowl MVP. Really makes me angry that, like, Knicks fans can't have anything. We've been bad for oh. I get it. Now it's, okay, 100% of attention on 9 million games tonight. It's a, it's a playoff game. <laughs> We've seen this movie before, and we know how it ends. And it ends with absolute disaster. But I'll tell you, that's fun. But the most fun thing about betting on sports for me is this like hey there's no tomorrow <laughs> and oh. now come on put pick it in are you ready sir start your engines let's go astros money line versus the marlins johnny cueto no thank you yeah oh my goodness how does this affect me personally which is absolutely bonkers to me if you do the middle school math, is 117 yards per game that you got to post each and every weekend. I knew it. I knew it. Who has the upper hand? Do we think it's going to be the offenses or do we think it's going to be the defenses? How about Saturday's game? Let's just throw a random game out here. Like, I don't want to put faith in NC State. There's a chance we'll, we'll lose outright. Who knows? Jinx is definitely not paying attention right now. He's just vibing to the music. Are you ready for the most interactive sports gambling show? Introducing BetQL Send It In with PJ Glasser. We want to hear from you. Send It In is about your picks, your trends, and your fades. Share your thoughts, predictions, and your best daily best bets with the Send It In community. Set your reminders, mark your calendars, and get ready to send it in on weekday afternoons at 1 Eastern on Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch. On your home for wagertainment, the BetQL Network, presented by BetMGM. Let's get back to BetQLU, presented by BetMGM. This is BetQLU, presented by BetMGM, the sports book born in Vegas, alongside John Martin and RJ Choppy. I'm Chris Mack. We will get you our best bets for the weekend in just a couple of moments. We've rolled through some of the marquee games on the slate. 
including Michigan-Washington, a rematch of the national championship game uh, in now the Big Ten Conference. Miami going out to Cal Berkeley for an ACC game. Uh, and, of course, Missouri-Texas as well, the only ranked matchup of the week. Um, one place where crazy just comes as a part of what they do every single week, the Big 12. Um, big statement win by Colorado over UCF that we already talked about, John. We also had Utah losing to Arizona. Um, Fafita, McMillan, uh, that pairing at Arizona is just absolutely talk about big plays. Uh, anything is possible there. More chaos possible this weekend, right? Uh, you never know with Oklahoma State. They're only a three-point favorite at home to WVU. Iowa State, who is, I don't want to say come in out of nowhere, because we talked about Iowa State at the beginning of the year a bit. Uh, they're favored by nearly two touchdowns at home against Baylor. You've got uh, Kansas, Arizona State, only a two-and-a-half point spread there. Arizona hosting Texas Tech. I'll ask this question first, and then you can kind of handicap the rest of the conference for me if you want, John. Are, are we sold on any more than one team from this conference somehow getting into the college football playoff because it feels like especially with the Utah loss last week that it's going to be whoever wins the conference championship game is the only team in yeah I mean I I think so many of these teams are so flawed um you know I mean who had BYU right sitting up here at five and oh and being first place in the league um, one team that I really like, and I've said this before, is, is Kansas State. Like, that quarterback is going to get better as the year goes on. We saw that they got down early against Oklahoma State. They stormed back. I don't, I don't remember how many unanswered, but it was a ton. Um, so I think as these all sort of get uh, – all these get settled and the dust settles on this, on, this, uh, on this conference, I do think it's only one, and I think there's a decent chance it's going to end up being Kansas State. I really do. Man, I am uh, I am totally with you on K State. I, I think they're a good team. Uh, I think they're solid. That I think their BYU situation. They just ran into a buzzsaw. A, a road game altitude. I just think they kind of ran into one. Um, you know that said, I mean they're going to go play Colorado at altitude, and that's like maybe that's just a bugaboo. But yeah, I, I don't see uh, I don't see two teams making it. There's too many. There's too many good quality. Big Ten and SEC teams that are going to get the benefit of the doubt. Because, uh, look, again, these are humans that are making this pick. And you see, you know, you see names in the front of the jersey, and you see Oklahoma State, you see K State, you see BYU, uh, and, and you see Utah. And they just, they don't, I don't know how much the committee thinks about eyeballs. They're human, though. And I just don't see how you're going to get more than one out of the conference this year. Yeah, the, the one team to keep an eye on, I think, that could maybe blow that up. Um, and again, we mentioned them at the beginning of the year. Iowa State, you look at what's left on the schedule for them. If they are a team that can run the table, and I certainly think it's possible because anybody can beat anybody, at least of the top tier teams in this conference, which there are, what, half the conference? You know, six, seven teams that you would consider top tier over the rest of the conference um, if you want to try and tier them out. Um if Kansas State were to get through Utah, or excuse me, if Iowa State were to get through Utah and Kansas State at the end of the year and be undefeated going into the conference championship game and still lose, depending on who they would lose to, I think, okay, there's a there's a borderline playoff team because they went undefeated through the regular season and only lost in the conference championship game, maybe to a good team like a Utah, much the same kind of path I expected for maybe an Oklahoma State at the beginning of the year before they made a mess of themselves. But you look at Iowa State schedule right now, John, the way it lays out. Baylor, we talked about that one. West Virginia, granted, on the road in Morgantown. UCF, Texas Tech. I mean, they could arrive in November still undefeated, and it wouldn't be totally surprising. Yeah. No, no, you're, you're exactly right. Um, and, and one thing that, you know, I really – really want to do is I want to love, you know, this Utah team, um, just as we're sort of going down the list. I, I want to love them. I'm, I, I feel so uh, – I have such a high opinion of, of Kyle Whittingham. But, man, that Cam Rising uh, misdirection every single week just spooks me, you know. Um, and, and could you have had multiple if that situation was right? But 
Um, the drop off is just so vast um, between Rising and, and Wilson, the younger brother of Zach, that, you know, I just can't get there and, and a different universe, maybe, but just not there with them. It's and look, I mean, it's every week. It, it really is. And now look, he's, he's like 35 years old, too. So it's, look, the body breaks down when you get old. Body just starts breaking down. You don't recover nearly as, as fast as you Gosh. used to, man. You know, this is his 48th year in college football. He has. Yeah. Here's the crazy thing. He has next year, too, if he wants it. He can get an eight because of the trade because he had to sit out a year as a transfer back in the old rules. He gets to get that year back. So he can play again next year if well, he really wants he? to. He can get the NIL, right? I mean, why wouldn't he? Yeah. He, yeah. He's basically said, no, seven years is enough. But, I mean, if he doesn't, if he hardly plays this year, he might be like, well, dude, might as well, right? He'll get some NIL money. Yeah, I can't blame him for that. Yeah. Head on back and maybe actually have a healthy season. <laughs> no, never mind. I couldn't get that out of the straight <laughs> oh, face. <no. laughs> oh, sorry. Um, before we get to our best bets, though, uh, is there a team in this conference, and we bring up the Big 12, and we can kind of roll through conference by conference week by week uh, throughout the month of October and early November before we start to put the playoff picture together. Is there a team in the Big 12, John, that you have any level of faith or trust in that you can match up with some level of value on the board to win the conference? Like I mentioned Iowa State. They're actually the favorite at BetMGM at plus 375 and right there with Kansas State at most of the other books uh, and Utah in a couple of spots as well. Um, you know, if you give me Iowa State at 4-1, to one, okay. I, I don't hate it. I'd like to have a little bit more return. Um, but right. then if you want to get a if you want to get a longer number, you're getting out towards the Arizonas of the world. Like Arizona is right around six right. or seven to one in most spots. I don't like Arizona that number as much as I like that quarterback wide receiver combination I mentioned earlier in Fafita and McMillan. Um, and then once you get out into the you know double digits and teens, you're talking about teams that I don't other than, you know, like you, you said earlier, BYU is still 15, 16 to 1 in a lot of spots. Yeah, it's just like when you get them away from that night game, you know, in Utah, it's like yeah. I, I just don't think they're the same team, you know. Colorado is definitely live. So they why are. not take a shot at 14 to 1? Why not? I mean, you have two of you have two top 10 draft picks, you know. Why not take a shot? It's kind of where I'd come down on it. Got a quarterback. That's what you need. They got a quarterback. You know, I, I don't know what to make of the UCF game. I don't think UCF should be 14-point favorites over anybody that's a Power 5 team. Um, that just I, – I thought that was just – I think Colorado's a little undervalued right now. Uh, they're not – they're not. I don't think they're going to win nine games, but they're definitely a bowl team. And, you know, Dion yeah. deserves a lot of credit. They played much better since the Nebraska game. Maybe it is Arizona. I keep coming back to them. Because of Tedero McMillan and Noah Fafita and those two together, like it, it's it's literally like pouring kerosene on a fire. Sometimes the explosiveness of that offense with those two, and I don't know. Maybe it comes back around to just the Big Twelve being all about the offense that can explode at any given moment, and that's the one that can the most easily with those two at the um, at having that connection through the air. Uh, we'll go through, maybe we'll do like ACC next week, Big Ten, SEC, the weeks after that as well, as we kind of re-handicap these conferences in the month of October before the playoff picture maybe starts to crystallize a little bit in the month of November. But let's be, get people our uh, best bets before we get out of here. Choppy, I'll let you go first. What do you got for week six? You know what? I like Navy minus the nine and a half against, uh, against Air Force. Little, uh, what is it, the Commander-in-Chief trophy or whatever it is. I think it's up to 10 mm -hmm. now, uh, but uh, I, I like Navy to win this game. You know, Navy's put together some nice season, nice games so far uh, this year, and Air Force at 1-3 and three has, has struggled, you know, really to get out of their own way. Um, their only win is against Merrimack. That's that's not going to get it done. Uh, they, they lost to Baylor by 28. I, I think Navy, 10 I don't get. Um, you know, injuries aside, it, it, it should be a little bit more than that. I think Navy wins this game easy. All right, uh, Service Academy choppy. Uh, no one's more patriotic than RJ. John, right. what do you got on week six, your best bet? It's going to be a total, fellas. It's going to be Auburn, Georgia under 51 and a half. Um, a I, I just think, you know, this game was played last year. Um, it was 27-20. You know, uh, I think Auburn's defense is definitely their best unit. 
Um, Peyton Thorne, we know, is is the starter, and he's been kind of jerked around all year at quarterback. Um, I don't really find I don't really find Auburn or think they will find I should say much success against Georgia's defense that obviously is coming off a week where they were absolutely torched. So I think you get the best effort there from Georgia defensively. Um, and uh, and I think Auburn can do enough here defensively to keep this sort of reasonable. I mean, I don't hate the 22 and a half, but I'm, I'm done laying big numbers with Georgia this year. I'm just not going to do it anymore. I've been burned too many times. Um, so we see that offense has been prone to getting off the slow starts. I think the under is probably more fair at 49. So I'll take the two and a half points of value here with the under. All right. I like that. I really like that look a lot. I'm going to go with the total as well. I'm going to go to the Big Ten for another matchup that never in a million years when you thought when you even when you thought about the shifting landscape of conference realignment, <laughs> did you ever look at it and be like, oh yeah, that's gonna be a great conference matchup that I can't wait to see. USC's going to Minnesota, guys. Yeah. USC Minnesota. Tell oh that, that just screams Big Ten. Here's the thing. We talked that's earlier right. in the season and the USC defense has continued to look pretty good. Uh, with DeAnton Lynn as their new defensive coordinator after poaching him from across town UCLA. Um, and I like USC in, in, in this matchup. Uh, on the road, shutting down a not uh, entirely great Minnesota offense. And I do think uh, USC's offense will be slowed down just a little bit as well, being on the road in the Big Ten. I don't think it's going to be – look, it's, it's October in Minnesota, so it's not the prettiest, but it won't be the worst either. USC's offense slowed down just a little bit by the travel, being on the road in the Big Ten, and I think this one comes in under the 49.5. We get a pretty decent number here for and under between USC and Minnesota. So there are our best bets, some Service Academy love, and a couple of totals for you as well. We'll be back next weekend to break it all down, look back at Week 6 and ahead to Week 7. Don't forget, you can always download us in podcast form by simply searching BetQLU wherever you get your podcasts. For RJ Choppy, for John Martin, I'm Chris Mack. For producer Zach Crawl. this has been BetQLU. You've been listening to BetQLU, presented by BetMGM. If you missed any of the show, listen back anytime on the new and improved Odyssey app. Are you ready, sir? Start your engines. Let's go. Astros money line versus the Marlins. Johnny Cueto, no thank you. Yeah. Oh my goodness. How does this affect me personally? Which is absolutely bonkers to me. If you do the middle school math, is 117 yards per game that you gotta post each and every weekend. I knew it! I knew it! Who has the upper hand? Do we think it's gonna be the offenses or do we think it's going to be the defenses? How about Saturday's game? 
let's just throw a random game out here. Like, I don't want to put faith in NC State. There's a chance we'll, we'll lose Jinx. outright. Who knows? Jinx is definitely not paying attention right now. He's just vibing to the music. Are you ready for the most interactive sports gambling show? Introducing BetQL Send It In with PJ Glasser. We want to hear from you. Send It In is about your picks, your trends, and your fades. Share your thoughts, predictions, and your best daily best bets with the Send It In community. Set your reminders, mark your calendars, and get ready to send it in on weekday afternoons at 1 Eastern on Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch. On your home for wagertainment, the BetQL Network, presented by BetMGM.